And we were just talking offline. Kirk, I haven't seen you in probably 13 years almost. Yeah. It's <laughs> It's been it's been a minute. Yeah. You had a, you've had a hell of a run, by the way, since since the last time I saw you. It's been all right, man. But uh but I gotta say, you grind as hard as anybody. I'm watching TV in the in the age of COVID and I know there's you know, the travel and that sort of thing and and where you stay, you guys are still burning the candle at both ends to deliver yeah. the package. And yeah. I wonder if it's more of a grind this year than usual or if it's been a different thing that you've just embraced. You know, it's kind of all you know. I mean, going back to even before you played, it's it's just all I know. And I love that part of it. You know, I love grinding. I love Dude. that aspect of, and you could talk to, you know, anybody, whether you played the game or you cover the game, if you have a, some success and you're able to, to maintain it, it's really all about the work that you're willing to put in. Real quick on my background is I wasn't, like you, I wasn't an all conference, all world first pick, you know, kind of guy. So I looked in the mirror and I saw, I got to grind even uh, forget as a player. when I went into as, as an analyst, when I sat on the desk in college game day, I was 25 years old. I've been there 25 years now. And I, when I sat there, I, I knew that the guy in Florida or Texas or California was like, I know Fowler. I know Corso. Who's that guy. And that was, a, instead right. of being embarrassed about that, I, I embraced it. And I just went to work, you know, and I just, my brain, I just thought they might not know who I am back in 1996, but I'm going to be the hardest working analyst and most informed analyst on TV. Like that was just my goal. And so that's, that's kind of where I started my little foundation. And that's when I look in the mirror today, that's what I still see. So I've had a lot of, you know, you know, you know I've been around a lot, had some successes and, but when I see myself, that's why when I saw Brady saying, I'm not comparing myself to Tom Brady, but that interview he did when he started tearing up and crying after he'd already won like three or four Super Bowls, but he was re kind of remembering draft day for him. And here all these years later, it was still really emotional for him to talk about that's being a six round pick. And I think I don't, you know, Tom, I don't know him that well, but I, one thing I've loved about him is, is how he's maintained a competitive spirit throughout all the success and hasn't lost his edge, he still sees himself as a six-round draft pick. I think that's the key. I think a lot of people forget that with Tom's kind of his psyche. And, you know, he's got his way of leading. And he's got – anytime you play, you know, at the Death Star for, like, two decades, everybody's going to find a way to try to hate you. And um, yeah, I, I do think that Tom – for everybody that sees Tom as such a chalky option to root for – he is in his mind that underdog and he doesn't talk about it a lot, but I think when he's vulnerable, that comes out in him yeah. in that moment. You know, it's interesting you say that because I, I think he remembers where he was. And to, to your point, you remember exactly where, where, where you were in 1996, by the way, I didn't know you were 25. I forgot about that, dude. Yeah. That's great. And <laughs> trip, trip, was... College, college game day trips are probably a lot different at 25 than 50. <laughs> <laughs> dude. And the other thing is there was no, there was ESPN. There was, yeah. there was no like other channels. It wasn't like yeah. a big 10 network an ACC network an SEC network. It's, it's almost like there's so many launching points. Now. So how did you see people play? And that's the crazy thing to me is like, I talked to my dad about this in the eighties, like when they were literally on plane rides home, like, you know, in my career, we were watching the games that we had interest in across the conference yeah. in division yeah. in real time on the airplane. Right. And, oh yeah. There's multiple channels and you have the internet. So I can kind of follow the score yeah. app or whatever I yeah. need to. My dad, they would land, and if Buffalo was playing across the country, you know, you'd hear about it on a landline. Somebody would call somebody and tell you what happened. Right. You'd have to wait until the, the right. newspapers in the morning. So, so how do you, as an analyst, you know, back in the '90s, see as much as you can possibly see and talk about things with expertise? Yeah, that's when Direct TV was really just initially getting started. So mm -hmm. we would a lot of times Saturday. The highlight for me is when game day ends. This is before I would a lot of times fly to go call a game. Right. That's when I worked on Thursday. I did some of your games with Tariko and Corso. Yeah. And so Saturday was just game day. And then we would stay. What, let's say we're at Alabama and Georgia or wherever we are. I would sit there and we'd have this little trailer and we'd have three TVs or four TVs. And we, we had this guy that hooked up all the direct TVs. So thankfully they had that. So at least you were able to watch it. But, you know, right now, as soon as I get done with you, I'm going to click on my, I'm doing Miami of Florida, North Carolina, and I'm going to click on video right here, my computer and boom, yeah. 
I can do whatever I want. It's, it's a very, very different era, obviously, but you were still able to, to break it down. And a lot of times you would get, uh, you get on the phone, you'd call coach right? And, and you'd break down get a little bit more detail with them. And, but it's, I think about this, the internet, I don't know. When did it start? 90- it's funny. Cause I'm like, in my head, I'm like, oh, Kirk's, Kirk's, in my head, I'm like, Oh, Kirk's hitting the pay phone to call, you know, the Nebraska coach. It's not that we're not that old. Right. <laughs> it's just right. 1996 seems like a long fucking time ago. I know, man. It's, it is, it's nuts, but it just, my, I guess my point going all the way back there is today, global pandemic yeah you know you i don't know how much you're traveling but like you 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 fly and you land at it you go to your hotel and it's, it's like a twilight zone it's I mean, empty right down. it's so weird you go down i haven't left charlottesville like i don't leave charlottesville because i don't have to right now for work or anything i yeah. do my amazon stuff from home uh in my studio down the way i do my podcast every day from home i've only been out to montana for vacation that's it i mean i've been in charlottesville since march and so sometimes when i'm looking at you traveling around for somebody who's so accustomed to hey like when i touch down on campus like the energy the life is awesome like that's the infectious part about college football it's got to be like you know another dimension almost it's so strange you know you you are you're routine oriented when you do I guess anything consistently over the years and I'm, I, I got my routine down for travel and right now it, it's, it's just a different routine. And when you go into a hotel and there's no one there, usually there's a buzz. I mean, it's like mm-hmm. you can drop in from anywhere and you're like, what's going on here? You know, normally mm-hmm. and right now there's, it's a ghost town, no one there. You go to a whiteout, which is one of the greatest scenes in the sport. You go to your hotel, you walk down the hallway creepy dark lighting and the, like mm-hmm. there's no one in the hotel there's and you don't get to see your friends so much i think one of the biggest coolest things about being on from the outside looking in is i can see the team aspect of what oh, you yeah. guys have done for a long time my dad you know on fox I'm totally sorry, there's a team aspect to it and you know there are protocols that are in place and probably common sense stuff where you guys don't get to do the same things 100 okay. I mean, yeah you know, like uh, you talk about lee how important he is to you I even coming every to the time lee pops on yeah you're like i miss i miss my you know <laughs> i miss my buddy. guy yeah you know, yeah how hard totally. is that? you don't get to see him i know it's such a good point and maybe people don't realize that you know you you seeing your dad go through this you, you can really understand it but you're right it's 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 a team it's a family and we have usually a on-site friday production meeting with 40 different people people on camera behind camera everybody is in there and it's a lot of ball busting and you know, everyone's just Mm -hmm. having fun. Usually Lee's right in the middle of it, making fun (laughs) of everybody. You know, he's 85 years old and he's holding court Mm -hmm. and we don't have that. And we're doing all of our meetings. Like you and I are talking right now. It's, it's a strange time, but um, then you got to go on air and be like, yeah, Yeah. man, let's go. Let's talk some college football, you know, so that, that that's about any crowd. There's the, you know, it's crickets around you. And, and so it's, it's been a, a different year in that uh, respect for sure. And that's affected how you guys pick college game day locations probably. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we went to coastal last weekend, which is, is become a really good story. They had a few fans. It's the only time we've had fans in 14 weeks. Yeah. Um, they had fans and of course they were socially distanced, but they were out there. They're, they were making noise, which was, which was kind of weird uh, to have, but yeah, we, we, we have, no fans at our at our shows. I mean, our show, if we go to Penn State or any of these spots, you could have ten or fifteen thousand people at, at the show. And then to go from that, it's almost like being a um I'm not saying we're we're um you know artists or you know you're at a concert, but it, it has a little bit of a feel like that. Yeah. When you walk on the stage and there's just sea of humanity and you take that away, yeah. it, it's no different than what your 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 guys are doing playing a game on a it's, Monday. It's amazing, what they're, it's amazing what they're doing. And I, I think anybody who's working in any industry in sports that's drawing that energy is, uh, is missing that. 